We all are aware of the top secret plans by the regime to assassinate leaders of the National Unity Platform and later blame it on ADF. I believe by now most of you have seen the tweet by Honorable Zake exposing the threat to his life. Last year, I had to cut short my trip in Kabale after a friendly European embassy gave us intelligence that there was a plan to kill me by shooting on that tour. Indeed, gunmen were captured on camera, aging closer to me, one of whom was wrestled down by my security team with a loaded gun ready to shoot. He was disarmed, handed to police in PG, but as usual, that was the end of the story. Nothing was done. So, with that background, we have reason to believe that the ongoing shootings are just a dress rehearsal for the regime, but the main targets are the opposition leaders, especially the leaders of the National Unity Platform. They want the population to get used to the excuse of ADF so that by the time they come for our lives, the population will be convinced already that the killing was a terror attack by the ADF rebels, not political assassination by the NRM. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ugandans, be alert. These are criminals, these are rebels, these are terrorists, these are murderers, and they must never fool you in case anything happens to any of us. Either the regime is responsible for all these shootings and killings, or it knows who is behind it. I mean, isn't it suspicious that the regime bought and installed CCTV cameras around the city and spent more than 450 billion shillings of taxpayers' money, but they've never even identified one shooter through all the years? Doesn't that disturb or provoke your mind? You have seen regime, the regime spending a lot of money. Now, recently, they've been spending an obscene amount of money for temporary fixing of roads and other infrastructures ahead of the non-aligned movement uh, summit. And yet, they never do these things for the citizens. They never fix the roads, they never fix the infrastructure for the citizens. Of course, in a well-governed country, a summit like the NAM summit would be a blessing because it would mean more foreign exchange, therefore more business for the locals and the citizens. But in Uganda's case, what was supposed to be a blessing has actually turned out to be a curse like it was during the Chogam summit. So many livelihoods have been disrupted and some have even been completely destroyed all in the name of putting up a fake image. Reports indicate that more than 3,000 businesses have been either closed or disrupted. Many people have been rounded up and detained, especially the homeless people in Kampala. Traffic and transport has, been, has become a nightmare, and generally lives of the citizens have been brought to a standstill. All this has been done in the name of the NAM Summit, whose benefits are actually limited to a few political elite who are making a kill out of it. Before long, I'm sure you're going to be seeing scandals and reports of who stole what, of who embezzled what,